Sealskin Covers, what's the year, make, and model? 2019 Chevrolet Corvette Grand Sport. So not a cop, not a cop, no more cars. Let's see how it sounds. Today's epic car is the C7 Corvette Grand Sport. This particular one is from 2019. So today I want to go over the details, but in an actual intelligent way, from one car guy to another. Obviously this is the last front engine Corvette, and that's important because that's where the lineage came from through all seven generations before, of course, the mid-engine C8 Corvette. But you guys already know that. One thing about it that took me a little while to warm up to, but then when I finally saw it in person, realized in terms of the design and art of it, the proportions are spot on. There are very few, if no, awkward angles on this car. Corvette in the past, especially the 1980s to 90s, were plagued with people having complaints about build quality, cheap interiors, etc., rattly cars. Well, that is long since gone with the C7 Corvette. This is a rock solid platform with no rattles, no shimmies, no shakes. And that's even important too, because this is a removable Targa roof. Very easily from the cockpit, you have three latches here. There's one, here's the second one. Look how nicely this comes into the body line. But the other thing comes into play is, how heavy is this? Is this reasonable to do as just an individual? Yes, very much so. So then you have a car, and if you take a peek at it, it still looks beautiful. But when you drive it with the top off, the car is still rock solid without those ugly shimmies and shakes you might expect from other cars with removable hardtops or that are convertibles. But also, there's the eight-speed automatic as well as the manual transmission. Now, believe it or not, this one is the automatic. Now, typically, myself, as well as so many car guys, we dog on automatics as being boring. However, this one's quite clever. It shifts very quickly. There are numerous settings from track to touring to comfort to sport, which change the way it shifts. This particular one has the sports seats. This is the highest line interior. It has a leather covered dash and the build quality is very nice. There's nothing shaking or rattling. You don't have that plastic creaking. Obviously nicely trimmed in leather in the stitching. The carbon fiber accents are pretty. Obviously it's, it's all electronic nowadays and you can pop that out to have your normal one. But something smart about this with Chevy, oftentimes modern cars have nowhere to put their key fob. But this goes into a handy dandy little place on the dash where you might expect it for a normal car and I'm able to energize the screens very easily. I'll go ahead and start it. It doesn't know, it's not my foot. Awesome. And you can see when you look back, it's very nice. Now, you will still see a couple of small details relating to this. It still has the analog gauges for speed, for fuel, and for water temperature. Now that's nice, but you'll notice, for instance, in this setting in Touring, you can very easily scroll through various dash settings. Here comes Sport, give it one moment to change. It also changed the exhaust note, which is nice. We'll switch it over to Track now. Give it one moment. There, bam. And you're right on, right on point with what you'd see from Track, from tire pressure to accelerometer to the RPM, and you can time things. It's truly incredible the amount of details you can find. However, it makes these analog gauges pointless. So in giving consideration to it like that, being the last front engine car, there's still a couple of things holding back from the past. I bring that up because frankly, GM did such a darn good job with the interfaces on this that I don't even pay attention to the analog gauges at all. And honestly, we could do without them. So I really wanna give you guys that point because the details with this car are truly incredible with all the things that it allows you to be able to do. For instance, your touchscreen goes right down like this, giving you a secret cubby hole where you can plug in a USB, keep your pens, sunglasses, anything like that. Boom, push that, and then you're right back. Things are very simple. You got an electric parking brake. You do have cup holders. You do have a nice place for a cigarette lighter to charge your phone. Although if you're charging your phone and you've got the cup holders out, there's nowhere really to put your phone anymore if you want to set it down nicely. I usually tuck it in between the seat and the seat's nicely tucked in so you're not going to lose it down below. You got a little area to put your little, your little doodads, your chargers and stuff, which work nicely, or you set it there. There's a hand hold for the passenger. You've got an ample glove box, but you'll notice here some nice little buttons. These seats are both heated and cooled. So yes, you can drive at speed in your car and feel like 
you're sleeping on an air hockey table, which is nice when it gets hot out. I know all the car guys want to see the engine and all that, but let's, let's, let's talk about real life. So first of all, the trunk is strong. It fits well. You could, of course, get golf clubs in there. The Targa roof does fit in place, but without it, you have a lot of room. You get a nice little cubby hole to put your items down in here. They did a nice job of making these very simple privacy screens. If people are casing your car, they can't see if you got anything in there, which is nice. Fits and seals perfectly, guys. Even at speed, you get no wind noise in this car, which is a really nice thing. It's got a soft close feature and brings it down. Uh, you'll notice this, it doesn't have a gas cap anymore, which kind of makes your life easy because you don't forget to lose it and you don't have to set it on your nice paint of your car. These scoops are in fact functional. Everything on this car is functional and that I appreciate because I really don't like fake stuff, especially on a sports car. Vents to let out hot air, but this one actually creates a low pressure to help get your air through your radiator and cool the car. And you'll notice right here, this one does not have the front license plate on, but even if you did, you get ample amount of airflow directly to your, your water radiator as well as oil coolers, and you get big brake duct coolers. Now you'll have to forgive this car, the engine bay is in fact dirty because it gets driven. That's how you know it's a fantastic car. It actually gets driven in the real world. But you can see here is where they create that low pressure to get a lot of the air straight from the radiator. And the fan for the radiator is down below it, which brings the air in through that and keeps an airflow through the engine bay, which also helps keep that cool. But naturally, it's well laid out. So the people that are going to want to get into modifications and work on it, they can. Everything you can see, you can get your hands in there to service it, to work on it. And it still is tried and true, kind of the old American way where you too can service your car in your own garage, which I really appreciate because that's the way I've always done it. But what's really neat about this, obviously this car is naturally aspirated and I've always liked the Grand Sports over say like a Z06 because let's say in C6 land, the previous generation, the Z06 was an amazing car. Big engine, all aluminum, dry sump, fast, incredible performer that you can buy at a relative bargain. Of course, it has the fender flares and it looks great too. But on the Z06 of the previous generation, you cannot remove the roof, only with the Grand Sport. I think the Grand Sport Corvettes in general, be it C6 or C7, is the best Corvette for the real world. You can take the roof off, it's got a great platform and chassis, the motor that's in it makes great power, and in this one, it's also dry sump, meaning the oil is not stored in the oil pan down below in the motor to get windage and aerated and to get hot and where it potentially will slosh and the oil pump can't pick it up and then starve your motor of oil pressure. That's no good. Well, it's dry sump. Much like some of the race cars surrounding me right now, the oil is pumped into a separate tank over here to swirl, get the aeration out, and where it's pulled from the tank into the motor is down there at the bottom. So it's not possible for this car to corner harder than what that oil can suck. So you're always going to have great oil pressure, whether you're on the street and going like crazy or you're on the track. So really neat thing, but doesn't add any unnecessary complexity to break down in the future for it. So I really, really love that. And I got a lot of confidence this is gonna be a good car in the future. Also the hood, great quality, nice and lightweight to keep this car athletic, but the fitment is fantastic. And just gently with two fingers, the fit, I love the fit and finish and perfect. Obviously you wanna keep your cars looking good and clean, but I don't feel too bad if the car gets rained on because it was built to use in the real world in varying climates. So naturally you're not gonna to wanna to drive it in snow because these high performance tires are not suited toward that. But with your C7 Corvette, it is almost a perfect car. You're gonna need two accessories and one simple fix for the car. First one, of course, is a car cover. Sealskin is the best. It comes to your door just like this, vacuum packed. You go on there, select it. It's waterproof, but also very softly lined so you can put on your prized car and not be worrying about that. So that's the first thing you gotta do. The second one, especially if you get the higher trim model is, get yourself a nice windshield reflector to put on there. Obviously it's gonna keep it cooler in the summer days, but you wanna keep that UV and light off of your dashboard and off of your leather. So you got your car cover, you got your windshield visor, okay? But there's one little thing that I think they did wrong. So General Motors has something called displacement on demand. When you're driving and cruising on the highway or on the roadway and you don't need much power, it will literally drop out certain cylinders where the motor is still theoretically balanced, but it closes the valves, cuts the fuel and spark to it so you can run the engine on four cylinders. Save a little bit of fuel. However, 
When I first drove this car and discovered that, I thought it was broken because I'm like, oh my God, it's shuddering. It's, it doesn't make any power. It suddenly pops back on. And I'm like, it's not running right. What the heck? Well, truthfully, it wasn't. It was missing. It's not even firing on the cylinders. And after a short time, I found it so annoying because it would have to fire the cylinders off. As a mechanic, as a car guy, I could tell this is not happy. The general populace might not notice, but let's be honest, the general populace is not ripping around in a Corvette so much. So while that can save you a little bit of gas, there also can be some negatives, but that's the way it is this day and age. So it is possible to order something that goes into your OBD2 just like this. Now, I don't suggest you defeat anything like your emissions, leave that all that alone, but by simply plugging in something like this, you're able to turn off the displacement on demand and it made the car absolutely fantastic and back to running perfectly the way it should that is the only thing this car needed to be perfect on that note i think we should go drive it first thing i want to point out on this car it's actually really good what was annoying when i wanted to make this video the bluetooth connection on the infotainment system is so good with my phone that it immediately connected, but the problem was it skits out my phone and stopped the recording. So I love interfacing with this thing for maps and for music and all, but in this one weird circumstance, it screwed it up. I've got air conditioned seats. So when I'm working hard and I'm coming home, I can actually feel comfortable. I'm wearing blue jeans and I'm dirty. Or if you're looking good, you're taking a date out on a Saturday night, you guys want to stay cool and fresh and you want your date to look good. Having that is just so nice. But beyond that, it is still an absolute sports car. It's still fast. It still performs in every way you want. It's not rattling and it's comfortable to drive on the street, which is insane. I never would have expected GM to be able to be this cool. So right now it's in track mode. I'm gonna just switch it over to like a normal boring touring mode. But it's got it's got like every mode in the world on this thing. It's got weather, W, where it's probably got all the traction control in like an overprotective mother that if it's uh, wet or sleeting or something you can go over to eco mode so it's real going to be chilling the shifts it's going to do thing to sip fuel i got touring which is like sportier but kind of chill i got sport mode and i got track mode so let me just put it in touring because that's where kind of driving around you're being comfortable and it's an automatic right now i'm just going to roll in the full throttle see how it is with shifting yes go oh that feels good now there's some cars coming up so i want to be respectful of them and also if it's a cop i don't want to get nerved <laughs> So not a cop, not a cop, no more cars. Let's see how it sounds. Now that's touring mode. So pretty crisp shifts, not crazy, keeps it comfortable. Let's just bring it up to track. Let's see what that's gonna do. I'm gonna roll her down here. Let's see if you guys can hear. All right, I'm gonna roll into full throttle, see what it does. Let's see the shift. Track, bam, nice. Yeah, so it really tightens up those shifts, really gets it on board. Now, this obviously is the eight speed automatic. They also offer it in a manual. Now, the thing that's cool about the manual in the C7 Corvette, there's a button you can push where you don't have to heel toe downshift and rev match by blipping the throttle. You can just hold your right foot on the brake and clutch, select the next lowest gear, and the car automatically blips the throttle and the RPM to rev match for the next gear. And I've used it before and it's absolutely awesome. So if I bring this down to manual and I'm in track mode, let's let's gotta bring it down some gears because I'm the one that has to tell what I want. Down to second gear for this tight corner, all right. And then I get a control. Now when I do that, it gives me shift lights like a real race car, you know, like a Le Mans prototype or a high-end Formula car, any car, Formula One car, and that's kind of neat. So you've got a lot of different displays here where it can give you all the information you need, uh, for just cruising and normal driving, readily see the tachometer and your speed. Uh, or you can give it to give you a bunch of information like the tire pressures and all the temperatures and even accelerometer. It's got great heads up display and it's all configurable. You can either pick the display you like and leave it on regardless of the setting or you can have the display change based on the setting. So I'll let you guys figure that out if you get the opportunity to do it. But I think you'll notice I'm getting no wind noise. I'm getting no rattling. The car is rock solid. I feel all the suspension in terms of it's just tight. There's nothing loose. The car's not wandering. It's comfortable to drive. You know, the power steering is not over boosted. The controls are laid out well ergonomically. It's, it's just a joy. And it's a car that I'd be happy to drive on the track, drive fast on the street, or just cruise in and be chill after a long, hard day, or picking up your date, or going out on a fun night out with your wife, hanging out with your buddies, I really think this is the perfect car. So I hope you guys have enjoyed today doing the first episode
episode gear make model big thank you to seal skin covers the product is awesome i've got a bunch of them on my cars so you guys are gonna have to check it out so remember get your seal skin cover regardless of what car you have especially if it's a c7 corvette get yourself your window uh visor to keep your the sun off the leather and if the displacement on demand is going to drive you nuts like it is for me because it makes you feel like the car's broken because it's not running right you may be saving a few miles a gallon you can get yourself one of those things to plug it in turn that off and then if you're going to go on a big trip where you want that last mile a gallon or two you can of course just plug it back right back in but consult what you buy with it make sure it goes along with all the laws obviously don't mess with the emissions and stuff like that but the bone stock c7 corvette truly is a joy and that's the first time i've said that about any car how the heck do you start a space company? Go to Russia and try to negotiate to buy the engines from their nukes when the Soviet Union collapses. You could read the book Breaking All the Rules by Jim Cantrell, where he talks about doing just that with Elon Musk. Yes, I lost a bet to him, but that's beside the point. I still like his book, and he's a cool guy that likes Genius Crutch. So go down in the description below, buy this book, and find out what it's like to discover a Russian buying spot for the first time as a young American. <laughs> See you guys.